In the previous video, I showed a user registration method that allowed even spam bots to register and be logged in. There were no safeguards put in place. Safeguards like honeypots or captchas. With this video, I want to show you a method that does not require these safeguards to stop spam bots. In fact, this method will even stop rogue humans in their tracks. Hi, I'm Ben Plesier and, like you, a fervent user of Wappler. Let's go back to the previous video and see what happens when a user registers. The user enters the required details and hits the submit button. The data is sent to the database. The user is notified that they are registered and logged in. I could have used a honey pot or a captcha to deter spam bots, but this would not stop a human spammer from registering. The result is a database full of bogus registrations. Not exactly what we want. This is what I have in mind. The user enters their email address in the request form. The form also contains a hidden honeypot field. If the honeypot contains a value, then the process is halted. Otherwise, the process will send an email. If the email address is bogus, the email will go to eternity. Otherwise the email will go to the user. The email contains a link with a code. When the link is clicked on, the browser will open the secure registration page containing the registration form. This form also contains a honeypot with a hidden code field. If the form inputs fail the honeypot test, it will halt further processing. Otherwise the form inputs will be inserted into the database. This method ensures that, only legitimate users will be entered into the database. What if a user goes straight to the secure registration page? In that case the hidden code field will not be populated. Even if the spam bot was to enter a code in the field, it would not pass the honeypot test. In the next section, I will take you through the steps to create this process. Mind you, I will start where I left off in the previous video. If you have not followed the videos and you are interested in creating this process, you can go to the Git repository. I will leave the link below. Carrying on from the previous video, I will make the necessary adjustments in Wappler to facilitate the revised procedure. The first step is to create a new field in the user's table. I want to make the password hash even more secure by adding a unique salt for each user rather than using a generic salt called Mon Day Chefs. I will be returning to the server side after I have created the forms on the front end. On the front end I need to create two extra pages. The first page is called, Register. This page will contain the secure registration form. The second page is called, Terms. This page will be used to provide a link to the terms and conditions. The next step is to modify the registration form that I created in the previous video. Please bear with me while I go to the registration form. I'll start at the top by adding request to the title. Working down, I add explanatory notes so that the user is notified of what is going on. I then remove the form fields that are not required, leaving the email form input and the checkbox. I want to use the checkbox as a honeypot field to trap spam bots. To do this, I first add an ID and a name for the checkbox. I then scroll down to remove the validation rule. The checkbox is no longer a required field. To the checkbox label I add an ID.
Lastly, I the go to the styles panel and add a couple of style rules. This will hide the checkbox when using a browser. Back in app structure, I add a destination page to the link. All of this is to make the field as believable as for Spambot. Lastly for the form, I change the submit button text. I will be returning to this form once I have created server-side action steps. For now, I need to add a query manager. This is to capture the URL query string carrying the email address and identity code. For the query parameters, I add email and code. That takes care of the main layout page. For the terms page, I add a container, row and column. Inside the column I add a title. At this stage I'll add no further content in an attempt to keep the length of this video to a minimum. Just a reminder to save the page when I close it. Next comes the secure registration page. Here I add a form from the blocks panel. This is the same form that I used for the registration form in the previous video. As before, I add an extra column to the first row and change the company input field to first name and last name. I give the form an identifiable ID. The email input field gets its value from the URL query string. Therefore I add the read-only attribute. After the email input field, I add a hidden input field named, code. Being a hidden field, it does not need any style rules, hence I delete the form control class. Like the email input field, the code input field gets its value from the URL query string. Therefore I add the read-only attribute. The next step is to add validation rules to all of the input fields. All of these steps were shown in the previous video. Now for the values for the email and code input fields. Selecting the email field, I scroll down to dynamic attributes and choose input, value. For the value, I choose query and email.
Then I'd do the same for the code input field. The value for this field is query, code. Lastly, I change the text and styling of the submit button. Don't forget to make this a submit button. I will be returning to both of the forms after creating the server-side action steps. For the server-side action steps, I go to the Workflows tab and select the Security folder. Here I right-click User Registration and choose, Duplicate. I guess that I could have just created a new file, but in this case I wanted to rehash an existing file. I right-click on the duplicated file and rename it to User Registration Request. First up, I need to adjust the posted values. Here I remove the inputs that do not appear on the form. There is one input that does not appear under the posted values. I therefore choose input and import from form. Magically, the terms checkbox appears as a posted value. Going down the list of action steps to execute, I leave the email conversion and the validate data steps as they are. I remove the database step. No more clogging up of the database with fake entries. I also remove the login step. After the validation step, I add a new step. Here I set a value for the code that will be used in the query string to the link to the secure registration page. The value is called, code. Its value is a hashed version of the email address. The hash that I have used here is SHA1. The email address is also used for the salt. Now for the email. At this stage, we do not know the applicant's name. So I remove both of the name fields. I change the email format to HTML. The mail body content is changed to reflect the new procedure. I had prepared the text in Notepad, so all I have to do is copy and paste the content. Note the link to the registration page. Because I do not have a published site, I have added a link to my local setup. This means that, I need to have Mon Day Chefs running in Wappler for the link to point to the correct local host server. This was explained in video number 3 called Dynamic Site. If you want to publish the site, then the link in the email would point to your online registration page. You may have noticed that email and code do not have a value in the query string. To fix that, I hit the edit button. This opens the editor where I click on the code tab. Here I place the cursor after the email equal sign and hit the dynamic data button. For the value, I choose email. I repeat the actions for code. Before leaving the email step, I should have changed the email subject line to reflect a request rather than a confirmation. I will do this outside of this video. Remember the honeypot? When a spam bot ticks the checkbox, I wish it to disappear without being able to go through the steps of the server action. To do this, I add an action step after execute. I go to core actions and choose the condition icon. For the condition, I choose the posted value of the checkbox. This means that if the checkbox is ticked, it will return a value of true. In this case I want the steps to be executed when the checkbox returns a value of false. For this, I add an else clause. As an aside, values in the then block are referred to as truthy, while the values in the else block are referred to as falsy. I now move the action steps into the else block. While the else block is optional, the then block is required. This means that I need to add an action step inside the then block. I go to core actions and choose response. 
This will send an instruction to the server. I name the response. In my case I have said, gotcha. But this can be anything to your liking. The status I have set to 403 which equates to a forbidden error. I also add a text message that will appear on the front end. I save the file signaling the conclusion of this section. I'll also close the file because we no longer need it. Now for the registration form. In the workflows panel, I select the user registration JSON file. Checking the posted variables, I see that the code field is missing. In the properties panel, I go to the linked page. It still shows the main layout page. I change this to the newly created register page. Then I hit the import from form button and the code field appears in the list. In the execute block, I leave the first two steps for obvious reasons. After validate data, I add a new step. This is where I set the value of the code using the posted email value. I right-click validate data to add the step. In the pop-up I choose core actions and set value. I name it, code. For the value, I choose the reformatted email address and apply a SHA1 hash to it. For the salt, I use the same reformatted email address. The next step is to test that the code that was emailed, is the same as the code that was so just created from the posted email address. For this, I add a condition step. The condition compares the two codes. This is the part where we catch the spammers. If the form was populated without a query string, or the values from the query string were fiddled with, then the two codes will never match. In the truthy block, I create a salt for the user's password. All I need is a unique value, and the easiest way is to use the timestamp. The value of the salt is set to an MD5 hashed value of the timestamp. For the salt, I again use the timestamp. Then the string is shortened to 15 characters using the substring method. The database step is moved inside the truthy block. Having added the salt field to the database, the database query needs to be adjusted. The first three values are okay. The password hash needs to be modified to reflect the new salt value. Here I change the salt value of Mon Day Chefs to the newly created unique value. Then I add the salt field to the query. The value is obtained from the set salt step. The email step is deleted. The security login step is moved inside the truthy block. Lastly, I will change the salt value for the password hash. I hit the dynamic data button and in the pop-up, select the format button. The current salt value is removed and replaced with the unique salt value. The file is saved. To recap. When the registration form has been submitted, 
The following steps are executed. The email address is reformatted to lowercase. The email address is checked for duplicity. A code is created based on the posted email address. If the just created code matches the posted code, go ahead and create a unique salt value for the user's password. Insert the information into the database and log in. The file can now be closed in readiness for the final touches to the forms. Seeing that the registration form is the first to show, I'll tackle this first. I select the form element. Notice the method. This should be a post method that I forgot to change when the form was created. But watch what happens when I change the form to a server connect form. Wappler has sensed my mistake and corrected it. For the form action, I select user registration. When the form has been successfully submitted, I want to communicate this to the user. I do this by scrolling down to dynamic events. Here I choose server connect and success. For the action, I choose the success notification and enter the success message. The server connect for user logged in needs to be reloaded to show that the current user is logged in. There are other actions that can be included in the success event, such as clearing the form and or redirecting to another page. There are also other events that can be captured here. To keep this video as short as possible, I will leave this for you to experiment with. I save the file. I can now close this file in readiness for the other form. For the last form, I again select the form element. This is already a server connect form created in the previous video. I do need to change the server action to user registration request. I then scroll down to dynamic events where I need to change the success message. I save the page and that is it. Testing time. I open the index page in Wappler and hit the open in browser button. Here I enter an email address that already exists in the database. If I now enter a new email address, notice the spinner on the button. I will leave a link below if you want to include that in your project. When the form has been successfully processed, we see a success message. Opening my email client, I see that the message has come through. I click on the link and the secure registration page is opened. Do remember to keep the local server running as explained in video 3. I enter my details and hit the register button. As you can see, the login button has changed to a logout button, signaling that I am now logged in. If I try to register again, I get an error message. There are more tests that I could go through, like pretending to be a robot or opening the registration page without using the secure link. So that I do not bore you any further, I'll leave these tests up to you. I have had fun producing the video and I hope that it has been of some use to you. See you for the next video on this series. Thank you for watching.